Um, I, uh, I, I know that um, we touched on this in, in your introduction, so it might be, be good for mm. you to, to share a bit more. Yeah. Yeah, I actually haven't seen any um, really concrete measures towards special economic impact on women and girls because all the subsidies so far that are put in place are not favoring the informal sector. And yet for Africa, for example, 60% of jobs are in the informal sector. They're considered vulnerable. Um, we are supposed to generate um, 30 million jobs every year, formal jobs to youth, uh, which is 65% of the population, but we generate only 3 million. And that's even before the pandemic. So I think the women who are in the streets, the women who are in the market, who can barely have minimum wage to be tax compliant. Uh, there is no packages for these women and how to protect them during this time. So I would say if it's a recommendation to organizations who really want to support uh, women and young women and girls, especially the, the ones who are struggling economically, is to put efforts and packages and subsidies into informal sector, micro enterprises, uh, move us from economic empowerment, you know, frameworks or lock frames to economic resilience, uh, provide capital and digital digitalization of the market because we're all moving now to online businesses and yet about 70% of Africa is offline. So even the ones who are out of the digital revolution and out of the internet, which is a, a privilege in many and luxury in many in Africa also need to be empowered uh, with technology. So just to touch base also on, on GBV, I think it's very much linked to economic impact. We cannot control GBV, gender-based violence, if women are not economically empowered because this makes them yeah. vulnerable to be uh, uh, to the power dynamics basically to offer them food and care only to abuse them. And now we see many women and, and young women and even children locked with their abusers with no legal framework of protection. Uh, so there is a lot to do and, and, and the list goes on really, like access to contraceptives, access to uh, sanitary pads. We see increase of child marriage in Africa. So uh, the list goes on on the kind of impact that women suffer from when it's very intersectional to their uh, digital access accessibility, economic uh, class, and so on. So I think that in terms of government, which I think is, it is the responsibility of government mm -hmm. right now to put in place shelters, centers, uh, uh, safe spaces for, for uh, survivors of GBV, we, we're not seeing that. And we're seeing government just putting in place funding that we don't know how are you accountable to spend that funding? What's the percentage of that funding going to youth? What is it going to women? How are you empowering refugees with that funding in your country? So I think there is a lack, in, in, increasing a lack of accountability to our political leadership, which what I want to see in addressing women issues as well.